It's an animal world out there. Watch the World Animal Awareness Society channel and feel right at home. Come, sit, subscribe, and stay a while. So I've been following them on Facebook and the story of Meatball. And so just following that and just seeing all the great things that they do and just the problem of the dogs out here is just, it, it's just astonishing. We, I really don't think we have that in Colorado. So we just wanted to come out here and see if we could help and kind of see more about what goes on day to day and, and just, I guess it's, it's a real eye opener for sure. It's, it's pretty bad out here. a call from a young lady named Star. Apparently a stray uh, wandered uh, onto her property and uh, she called Detroit Animal Control who said they'd put her on a list and that was last week sometime and uh, they've never come. Her landlord wants the dog removed. You know the dog can't stay here and she also doesn't want to just let the dog go out on the streets. You know it's obviously not safe here in Detroit on the streets. So we are going to make her sign a surrender form. She's signing not as the owner but as the finder. Um, and then we'll just talk to her a little bit more about what the situation is. Hey, Sandra, I'll have you get up here and let her sign this for me. I'll grab the dog. I'm going to make her sign as the uh, finder. Hi, good girl. Aren't oh, you beautiful? Beautiful. Little box in it. Yep, gorgeous. So, um, Star, uh, just tell us a little bit about what happened. Why don't you, you come you out where Terry is too? You, you uh, contacted. Uh, well, you, you tell your story. I'm not going to tell it for you. Well, I had contacted uh, Detroit Dog Rescue. Um, I mean, the uh, pound to come get them like five Detroit days ago, control. and they went, they didn't come. How come? And when I called them, she kept on saying, "Call them back at lunchtime." <laughs> So I called them back at lunchtime, and they never came. They never came to get her, and I told them that my landlord didn't want her here. So this was the stray that you, you saw um, running, you know, around in your well, neighborhood? Well, she wasn't running. She came up to me. Right, but I mean, it's a stray. This dog is a, a stray. Um, is that what's going on, Terry? Is that they're not wanting to pick up strays? Well, yeah, they're. I don't know what the what the problem is, but they're not picking up strays and stuff. So, you know, we're just. Well, I was keeping them so they can so anyone can get it because when I call anti cruelty, because I had sent my dog to them because we didn't, we didn't have a home at the time and we went to Texas, and I was supposed to get my dog back, and I called them and they said that he wasn't there. Because they had killed him already. Yeah, I know. So, so, you so when me. I got on the phone for her, because uh, Michigan, uh, um, Michigan Humane Society gave me the number. Okay, I, so, so hold on. So, so I want to know. So you talked to Michigan Humane Society, Michigan Anti Cruelty Society. Well, Michigan Humane Society. Society came here for my dog because somebody was calling for my dog. But they saw your dog was healthy, and you yeah. told them about this stray. Yeah, right they here. said they couldn't take her. And they said they couldn't take her, but to call Michigan anti-cruelty. Yeah, but anti-cruelty, the guy told me, can't you believe they can take your money, but can't take the dog. Right, and that's what he said. Yeah, so but he got real ugly on the phone. Like, he was telling me more or less that he was just going to kill the dog. Right, that's it. right. So I'm like, I'll just, he's like, if you want to hold her, I, doesn't, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. But they wanted you to sign as though you're the owner, right? Yeah, and I told him I wasn't doing right, it. Right, because you're not the owner. They didn't want to hold her for the four-day stray hold. Yeah, so, and, and so Detroit Animal Control, who doesn't do their job, right? They right. didn't come here to get the dog. Then, then they, they just don't show up. Then you have Michigan Anti Cruelty come in here to check on your dog that somebody called it. Yeah, Michigan Humane Society. Somebody said because I got to get a plastic house like that, and I, I don't. Oh, mind. you don't have like, a dog he house. He comes in. in. Okay. He's not an outside dog all the time. Okay, So gotcha. he said we're not even going to write it up. We're just going to disregard everything. So but why you did tell Michigan about Humane this, Society not want to take that dog? What right. They because say? they said they're not for that. That's we don't pick up me. strays. He That's Detroit Animal Control. They're not picking up strays. Let's hear. Go ahead. 
So they're not picking, they told me that they can't take her and no. I said, well, my landlord don't want her here. He's like, I'll give you a few numbers and then that's it. So I called the same number that he gave me for Detroit Animal Patrol to come get them. And they, oh, okay. I called them back and they never came. So, uh, How long ago was that go. that you rang DAC? It was like five days ago I called them. Okay. <laughs> um, they kept on telling me that they were going to pick her up, pick her up, but they didn't. You're a resident here. You live here, yeah, right? Your home. mail comes here. This yeah. is your home. Uh -huh. So you're a citizen of Detroit right now. Yeah. Is that not a little confusing to you in terms I of... I mean, it made me mad, but I wasn't mad at the dogs that they didn't come right. get her. If they didn't come... I mean, I had dogs on my own, and, you know, I had enough dog food to feed her. Hi, baby. I was just going to keep her until somebody could come get her. But the question is, really... Is it a little confusing in terms of what these body, these organizations are supposed to provide to you as a service? Yeah, I was, I was worried about that. Like, where does the money go? Like, where is it going? They're just taking it and just killing dogs. So you called Terry? Yeah. Have I seen your guys' uh, thing with that dog that had tubes in its head? Oh right yeah, there? courage. Yeah. yeah. I seen, I seen him. My baby. And then I was wondering, like, they, they say pit bulls. But I was looking at her, and she was a boxer mix, everybody was telling me, because I put her on missing dogs for her owner to find her. Right. So you did have this dog on a... on a Missing page, yeah. And I contacted them. The people on the page told me to call Detroit Animal Patrol, and I done did, and I told them that, and they, they never came. Well, you did the right thing. You, you really did. We're Which sorry. Which site did you post her on? Um, I post her on the loop, uh, yeah. okay. and then the uh, Detroit Animal Control. Hi. Where you going? Come on, good girl. Come on, let's go for a ride. We're going to go help out our friends if we need to go quick. Cherry. You were a good girl. Cherry. You were a good girl. Yes? Where are we headed now? Detroit Animal Control. You ready? So, you know, of course we would love to take this dog ourselves. The problem is um, we have uh, seven dogs at a veterinary hospital right now and an $8,000 vet bill that we have to pay today, um, as well as a mom and some puppies that we have to pick up that we just saw that are not in a safe um, location. Um, some other puppies that have to be picked up and another dog that's um, either sick or being neglected. So because we don't have a shelter, we're, we're limited on the number of dogs that we can pick up. We would, of course, love to take her with us, but that's not possible today because we just don't have any place to put her. Sure. Um, who are these people here? These are some wonderful Pull people. Pull them right over here, please. All the way from Colorado. We have Julie and Oscar from uh, Colorado. So we have people to blame for our weather then this morning? <laughs> yes. They brought the rain from Colorado now. Um, Why are they here? Lovely people. They are these to... spies for the competition, <laughs> Terry? Listen, I wish we had some competition out here. I would love to have some other organizations out here working because obviously, you know, we uh, it, it's a hard uh, job that we have that we don't have enough people and enough resources to help all the dogs in this city. There's too many dogs and not enough of us. So who do we have here? So we have Julie and we have her husband, Oscar. You're visiting. Now, this is like a, a real thing. So, not only are you um, capturing dogs, you're spurring the tourism trade here in Detroit? <laughs> Apparently, we are. I she, told them when they contacted me, I couldn't believe you're going to come to Detroit on vacation. <laughs> so, let me understand this correctly. You guys actually have real jobs and spent real money to come here on a day like this to hang out here. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Anything we can do to help out. Yeah, it's a daily struggle here. I feel like uh, we're fighting a war that we're, we'll never win. You know, not without uh, mandatory spay and neuter. There's just, there's more dogs than there are of us. And mm -hmm. it's uh, so many to pick up. And, you know, where do we put all these dogs? You know, how, how can we help them all? You know, it's a, it's a tough question. To so, answer. Terry, are you officially getting in the tourism business? How much are you charging <laughs> to take know. them around in the rain in Detroit? <laughs> Maybe I should. I okay. Don't know. I don't it's a so. new destination. We thank you guys for coming Absolutely. out and hanging out with us today. And uh, we're going to head to DACC. Yep. What's this new chapter? What's going on? Okay, so we're here at Detroit Animal Control. We went and picked up a stray um, that somebody's been calling about since last week. Um, and we brought the dog here to Detroit Animal Control to turn the dog in. And they apparently are not receiving, um, accepting any dogs right now. Uh, they are instructing people to take the dogs to Michigan Anti-Cruelty, where the dogs will be killed. 
You're watching Rescuing Rogue, featuring Detroit Pit Crew Dog Rescue on the World Animal Awareness Society channel. I need to come in your car, hold on. Hold on one second. We couldn't hear you. Hold on. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yes, I've um, found an abandoned dog in an abandoned house behind me. And I've been calling the animal control, I guess it's on Jefferson or whatever, for the past week. And they have been supposedly coming to get this dog. But no one has shown up. And I'm trying to find somebody who will come and get the dog. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Hi. What you doing? Hi. Hello. Hi, no, no, come on out, come on out, it's all good. Uh, it's fine, I'm with Terry. We just document the different rescues we do. Look at this little guy. How are you? I'm fine, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. Terry's just right behind me. Yeah. So, how long have you had this? Uh, I've this had him for maybe almost a week, I guess. And he was in the house behind us here. Uh huh. And then he was in this cage, just like this. You've been trying to. Um, here's the thing: we're trying to document what's going on, and the right. fact that the city is not providing right now some of the services it needs to. So, you've been trying to call. Right. Uh, what I think groups? it was three one three two two four. 6356 and I think it was Detroit Animal Control and she kept saying we'll be out we'll be out we'll be out but they never did come out and 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 I told her that the dog was abandoned and and um, so this dog was abandoned in the house behind us here okay and then you called animal control to come get her right and they said they were coming out and they, they never did come out they never did and come so, out so uh, She's been abandoned by her owners and also abandoned by Detroit Animal Control. That's right. That's right. So, okay, well, we're going to have you sign, just so everybody knows we're not stealing the dog. We'll have you sign a finder surrender form. So you're giving us the dog, basically. Okay. Okay? I'll get that form right now. Thank you. That might, who is that? Is that with you? No. Oh, yeah, she's with us. Oh, I was going to say, that might be them right now, because no. they keep saying oh, they're no, coming that's out, what, but they that's, never... That's one of my crew members. Okay. We're, we're receiving calls all over the city yeah, right Yeah, we don't think they're picking up right now because they were actually making a physical move. And um, okay. I, I don't think I don't think they're here. picking yeah. up. They're just, they didn't communicate with the citizens. Hey, we're not going to be picking up until October 3rd. When you go to their facility, uh -huh. people have been trying to drop off. They won't take them either. You got to take them to Michigan Anti-Cruelty Society. Yeah, I said today if they don't come get them, I was going to take them and drop them off. Yeah. But today they're not even answering the phone. And Max isn't even open. So anyway, so this, this lovely rescue pit crew, it's a one-woman show. She's trying to just stem the tide. And oh, well, God bless her because see that, I didn't see those know people, what That's I was one of her support do. people coming to help out. Hi, how you doing? I didn't know what I was going to do if I couldn't find nobody because I have a dog. And I, I really don't need another dog, but I just didn't want it to die in the house behind us, you know. A lovely dog, though, too, huh? It is pretty, and she's very, she seems like she's pretty much trained because she only uses the bathroom in the backyard in one space. And um, I think my mother-in-law walked her. The cage, it came with the cage. 
Who gave it to you? It was in the house behind us in this cage. Oh my gosh. Right. And the house behind us is abandoned. And it was just in this cage and it was just barking and barking. And All right, like, before you take another step further, you got you to gotta tell our audience who you are. You and I have met before. <laughs> but so now you're, you're here to help out in what we'll call, this is a crisis right now that's mm -hmm. going on. What's your name? Verna. You're, um, you're the secret sauce in the Detroit Pit Crew recipe, is that my understanding? Yes, I am. <laughs> and, and why is that? What do you do that, that makes you the, the secret special sauce? I usually take them and I re rehabilitate them and um, get them spay and neutered and everything. Then they go up for adoption. They learn how to be people friendly, house broken, you know, all the good stuff when they come to my house. That's excellent. How many dogs have you um, helped uh, Terry kind of move on to a new life? Probably, I want to say maybe 30. Oh, okay. more than 30. Well, it could be more than 30. Yeah, she's, <laughs> I she's, stopped counting. She's just a braggart anyway over there. <laughs> so so, so what, what's the prospects with this lovely, lovely girl here, Verna? Well, it's going to be evaluated. Uh, we're going to test them for temperament. And usually if they have a bad temperament, I usually work with them to socialize them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, after socialization, I take them to different uh, uh, pet stores and everything and let people walk them up and down the street, let people give them a treat, you know, so they could be people friendly. Um, usually, a lot of ones that, you know, we get after they're loved on a lot, they usually, you know, change the attitude anyway. This one just seems to be a lover right from get -go. Yeah, yeah. This one's got a raw deal, but we're going to fix it up. Right, right. Excellent. She's and, so uh, happy to be out of that. Um, what was your name again? There. My name is Diana. Diana. Diana Williams. Diana Williams, thank you so much for calling and uh, and sharing your story. And um, Did you get a usually people... There? Like you what get to happened? name the dog too. Does this Come dog here. have a name that kind of like talks to you? <laughs> no, no. Look, I've been uh, I watch cartoons a lot, and the girl no, on the cartoon no, calls um her pet uh cutie patootie. So I just <laughs> been calling it cutie patootie. <laughs> so so there you go. Hold on, Verna. Let's let's take one light before we go off. That I'm is cutie patootie. <laughs> Hey, you guys, I'm telling you, it came with the cage. My dog already has a cage. Oh, you're a fibber. You just want to donate to the cause here. <laughs> so we'll have you, um, just, I wrote your name. I don't know if that's how you Where are you going? I Her believe car? she's going in the back of Teresa's van. Okay. Teresa, she going in yours or mine? Um, uh, Verna, you know what? Do you have a crate in there? Yes, I do. Put it in there. Okay. Also get the dog out of the abandoned field next. And then we'll head, open to, that. we'll head to center line. Last year we did do a fundraiser. That's one of our that's our baby. So we have a baby. Oh, okay. Throw all the food on the side. Yeah. Hold on, don't drop that. That wouldn't be nice. She's Let just that a go. puppy. How old do you think she is? She, I would say. Let's see those chocolates. Oh, she's young. She's really I'd young. say, yeah, between six, ten months. Wow. Yeah. What a gorgeous dog. Hello. She's got her adult canine, so she could be up to a year. You're pretty. She's really cute. I would say Cocker Spaniel something. Pretty. Pretty. Open that cage for me. Hi. Hi. Who's oh. your helper, oh. Verna? <laughs> Who's your helper? That's my helper. That's my son, Noonie. Hi, Noonie. Go on, honey. You got a couple of helpers. Yeah, I do. I have seven sons. Get out. Yeah, everybody's grown. Well, it is. I think, you know, that's old no school. <laughs> that's, that's old school when uh -huh. families used to have that. Is uh -huh. So they could actually grow up to do all the work for us, right? That's the yeah. whole idea. That's how it is. I raise, them to, I raise them so I don't have to do anything when I get old. <laughs> You're watching Rescuing Rogue, featuring Detroit Pit Crew Dog Rescue on the World Animal Awareness Society channel.
Hello. Oh, buddy. There he is. I'm going to wait for Terry to find out what to do here. Buddy, I hear you. Hi. What's going on? Why are you outside? Hi. Camera. What's this one? Why don't you pop it right over that fence and tell me what you see in the back of that yard? So how do you uh, approach something like this, oh, Terry? Knock so on the door and see if. Uh... That car is booted. So where are we? So we see a cage in the back here. We are in Detroit on the east side. We see a, a dog chain back here. Uh, you see the cage on the porch? Yep. Hi, buddy. He's up on the porch. All right, let's see what's going on, Terry. He's not happy back there. No, he shouldn't be out there in that cage like that. It's getting cold too, even just with a little bit of coolness, the, the, the moisture makes it way more cold. Right. And you know, you think about the rain dropping in on that cage, and then so he'll be sitting in water, you know. So it was a neighbor who contacted us, so I was concerned about the baby uh, being back there for obvious reasons. So what do you do here, Terry? Well, let's call the person who contacted me and see if she knows whether or not somebody's home. There's somebody in there. I can see them. You can? Yeah. Please answer your door. So now Stay right there. Now we're going to call the neighbor. So I explained to him that's against the law to, to leave your dog out like that, especially a puppy. Um, he says that he just let the dog out to go to the bathroom, but that's not correct. So my phone's not working right. That's the kicker of it all today. Just so what do you want to, what's, what's the end goal here? What can we do? Um, well, we instructed him to bring the puppy in, and that's what he's doing right now. So that's all we can do. Uh, so what's going on? This lady's going to show us proof. Um, okay, I'm going to go over your shoulder then. Okay, I have proof here. I have uh, so many videos. Oh my god. 
Um, There's a neighbor out there over there. Okay, I, d I don't want anyone to see me. You want to just, um, yeah. just lean up against it? Hop in. Um, this is one. And then eventually I zoom up and you can see the puppy through the gate. In a couple seconds I move over. Why do you believe they're being fought? I'm not on you. That's what we were hearing and seeing too, just now too too. This puppy is left out all the time. And thank you guys for coming, coming so quickly, like, oh, thank you, sorry. This puppy is left out every day, night and day. Well, I told him next time I'm coming with the police officer, so I'm not going to be nice next time. Thank you. So, but did you said something about them trying to fight dogs in the front well, yard? The, the neighbors down there, they said there's another little puppy, and the little kids will sit in the front yard and try and, like, go with them to Engage go at each them. other. Right. Which, obviously, is If you can get a video of that, we'll come yes. and we will, that'll give me um, enough evidence to confiscate the dogs. Okay. Because that's illegal okay, great. Uh, activity. So the next time you hear that puppy or see that puppy, you call me, I'll be back with the police officer. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. I've called so you, many people. Like no, hold on. Sorry. No, that's what I was just going to ask you. I just kismet. So you were just going to say you've called a bunch of different locations. Yes, I have. And everyone just kind of says, well, Can you say who you called? I, you're I, not on camera. I No, I, I've i called so many numbers. I... Um, I I can't even remember now. I would just, I Googled um, Pitbull Rescue, Humane Society, and I just called every number, and whoever picked up, I just gave them the information. So I can't How remember. How many people picked up, do you think? Maybe three people three out of people. 15. Did anyone else show up? No. You were the only people I've shown up in. And that's our problem here in Detroit, is that, you know, we have no other organizations responding, and, you know, we're, again, I, I do the best I can, but I'm, you know, we don't have a lot of people, we don't have a lot of resources, so it's us running all over the city. But we try to respond to every single call that we get. It's right. tough, but we do respond. Well, that's the thing I don't understand, quite frankly, Terry, is they have resources, they've got trucks, personnel, people that are specific for it. Paid you're people, actually, we have no paid people. We you're nobody the here cook, gets paid. the chief, right. the bottle washer, the whole deal, and right. yet you still are able to respond to people. Yeah. How, how quick did she respond, just like you? Um, oh, God, uh, maybe within an less hour? Than, yeah, within an hour, definitely. Okay. Which was amazing. Because, and the other thing that helps us respond quickly is when they had, she had a video and she had um, proof. When we get video proof, you know, then we're like, all right, we have something to go on here. We have evidence. When we have evidence, we can make things Why happen. is that important? Well, because it, when I have evidence, I can, then I can ask for the assistance of the police department, you know, and stuff. And we have a lot more, um, we have a lot more to go on than then we're able to respond quicker. as an independent too you're limited and you've got certain boundaries you got to paint it it's like yeah. it's like this paint by numbers landscape and you've got to play within this certain boundaries and you're constrained right. a lot by what you can do but you still figure out how I, to I still try to help you know it's just we can't provide as much help if we don't have any evidence i mean last year we had seven successful prosecutions against either animal abusers or dog fighters this year we currently have two pending cases in wayne county so when we have enough evidence, then we can actually get people. We have had people locked up. We have people currently incarcerated because of our um, investigative work. Yeah, but it's a lot because, you know, you, you're talking about gathering of evidence. You're talking about, you know, uh, getting with the police, then getting with the prosecutor's office and make sure it goes to court, and making sure that you have all the proper documentation and make sure that it's a successful prosecution. You're watching Rescuing Rogue, featuring Detroit Pit Crew Dog Rescue on the World Animal Awareness Society channel. Director Miller, do you have any comment on the police officer you're harassing that's trying to assist your department? I'm sorry, you're gonna have to define harassing. Blackstone, thank you for going to get it. Good. I can take it out of the run book now. And I mentioned to her the dog on Central, and she goes, yes, please go get that one for us, too. No, go talk to her. That was really good with her. Do you want me to see if she can get her over? Yeah, she can. Yeah. We think that something like her butt maybe 
we don't know if she had puppies in its breach or if maybe something got her, but there's been a lot of flies there, so we think that something's wrong in the back. She sat by her front door until we set her up back in the corner, and then now she hasn't left back here. She sat by her front door for about six hours yesterday. No growling, no barking. Only oh, no. growled when she first came in in the morning, but she was shaking so bad that she was pooping and peeing at the same time. Like when we came to the door, she was using the bathroom all over the car. Yeah. That's our It's like I got lots of food. I need some loving. Hi, you okay? There's something wrong, huh? You can smell. Are you the one that was pretty good with her? Yeah. What's What's your name? Rebecca. Rebecca. Because she's made friends with her. Is it easy to get it on? It's I'm gonna show her how it's done. Okay. It's just a leash. You just, you just kind of slip it around her head. Yeah. And try If not, I, I'll get the snappy snare. That might be even easier. Well, I don't know how she's going to react. She lets me pet her when she's eating, but... We'll try slipping this over her head. And see have it she, with you, and if, she, if, if she you're able out, to, then yeah. We'll just, oh, she's yeah, okay. Now I got grass all over my body. This is what's going on with the um, pickup of this dog since Detroit Animal Care and Control is not down here. Citizens working with Officer Briggs.
Going to DAC right now? No, she's getting herself in trouble. What? That person uh, said you could, then said you couldn't because she got in trouble. But that's all on her and them.
Yes. Who'd you get reamed by? Melissa Miller. Okay. It's why did she? Why right? did she? Why did she ream you? It's a long story, Tom. She she thinks I took the dogs off private property, which I did not. She it, it's a long. She's going through a lot of shit right now, and she just went off. You're watching Rescuing Rogue, featuring Detroit Pit Crew Dog Rescue on the World Animal Awareness Society channel. There is an extremely emaciated dog living in an abandoned house. Um, a resident in Southwest Detroit called us about this one. Um, they want us to come over and try to rescue the dog. Call from a um, property management company, a, a landlord, um, has evicted a tenant and that tenant has left their dog behind. Now, obviously you've been with us this morning. We've received 20 calls this morning. We've received a shitload of calls. So we can't take every single dog. We don't have a shelter. The dogs that we pick up um, go into medical boarding and so we can't take every dog. This is a dog that we don't have room for right now. The property management company is on their way right here now. They're gonna sign something stating they can, that we can legally remove the dog. They do have an official eviction. So this dog is now the property of the property management company, so they have the legal right to sign the dog over to us. You just want some loving, right? And food. So right at the moment, there is no food here for him? No. Lori, how, how typical is this situation? How typical has it been? This where happens quite frequently. People move and they just leave the dog. Especially leaving it tied up. I mean, how's it supposed to? I mean, it's, it's bad enough when they leave them running, but when it's tied up, they can't find it on their own, you know? Come here. He's a very strong dog. What's your name? Phil. Hi, Phil. He does a little Who are you with? Rondo Investment. Okay, and this is one of your homes? Well, it's one of the homes we manage. All right, and um, the people who were previously living here this was their dog yes and they just left the dog it's been here roughly like four or five days okay terry it's my understanding that others have been called about this right uh yes that's what this uh, lady down here told us i guess somebody called the humane society also and yes they never we called them and a couple other agencies and then we got in touch with you guys Did, so nobody responded well they responded they actually sent somebody out and i guess they fed the dog but they I didn't have enough room so do you know who, who responded that way? Um, I forget it was one of the ladies in the office that called, so. Okay. Um, what's the house number again? Santa Rosa. Okay, so I'll have you print your name and sign. And, and he has told me that an official eviction has been done. So now the dog is their legal property to sign over to us. Who okay. think he was badly? They used to beat him. Yeah, they beat him. My mom was sitting on the side porch uh, two months ago and the dog had gotten away and he'd run down there about three four blocks and the guy walked down and found him and took him in the backyard and tied him up and then hit him in the head uh, like a, almost not quite a two by four uh, and the dog was crying and screaming and we called and nobody came up see See, that's part of the problem, see, that's why I want to do this job. And yes, I get excited with my there, hands. There shouldn't be any holes in the system this, here, right? This is insane, you know. You've got neighbors witnessing this dog being starved and beaten, and, and they come out and just because the dog's not outside, they leave. You know, you can't knock on the door and say, can I see your dog? I mean, well, we were the people inside, yeah. but they never the door. You know, so then they move out and leave the dog, and still nobody will come pick him up. You know, I have to come down on my oh, office. Thank you. So, thank it's you just insane. Much. And if you do see a view, so you could take it. It's just insane. It's just insane. Because when we have enough evidence to get somebody locked up, they shouldn't oh. be hitting dogs. They, should, yeah. they shouldn't be doing any of that stuff right. with dogs. And, and we need your help in order to change that. You know, it's it's the community that... Um, well, some people don't yeah. consider dogs family. Right. That's what's problem. Do you have a dog? I have a little cute cheat too. She's a rescue. Mm. Somebody dumped her on the trunk of a car. My oh, yeah, that's no good. Good for you, though. No, I, I wasn't going to feed him because I don't want him to throw up and, you know, because he'll throw up. I fed him, I fed him a little bit, but. Oh, okay. Do you want water or anything like that? 
No, he's okay. Oh, okay. He had water, actually. I gave him oh, water. Sure. Let me get no, he had some. Oh, he did. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think we're about a minute away from heading to take him to DAC. Oh, okay. No, that is see. our destination, correct? Yeah, unfortunately. You're here because you love animals. Help save a life today. Your donation will send the World Animal Awareness Society team on our next mission. From all of us here at the World Animal Awareness Society and WA2S Films, thank you for watching Rescuing Rogue. We'll see you next time.